Right, I'm just going to continue from where we were. Um, so the e pawn takes f. Yeah, so again, we just looked at this idea of uh, white being able to play uh, f6. So it seems really f6 is forced. Um, but yeah, it's true. It, it, it doesn't seem so great for, for black. Uh, black doesn't have a light square bishop. And these squares are just just weak really so it's very easy for for white to take advantage of that um, and we've got this idea so I mean white's giving up the bishop pair here uh, or rather deep blue opted for this I mean their bishops now blockading this pawn which is now isolated but uh, again there's a lot of pieces that can defend it for white at the moment and uh, white still got control of the A file uh, so A takes B this trade and obviously this was the the key move perhaps the most controversial move of the game which was the infamous bishop E4 um, now one thing I was trying to figure out was perhaps maybe to come up with an explanation of how the computer found this move. I mean we see modern engines do find find uh, find this move Bishop be four and I think when we look at the alternatives I think that uh, well really there's only there's only two candidate moves really anything else isn't really good for white so maybe this is uh, perhaps why I mean obviously with the idea of e4, it would give it would give uh, black counterplay threats. You know, the idea is a queen to e5, for example. So just you know, attacking the king. But so maybe it was rather an analysis of deep blue from black's perspective, which was able to deduce that bishop e4 was a good move. And obviously, we've got communication between the rook and the queen then. So. I mean, what else does does uh, does White play other than Queen B6? I mean, it seems everything else is uh, it's just drawing. It's not really going to any kind of advantage. I mean, if we just play a random Queen move. For example, then uh, yeah, it just it just it basically just gives e4 for black. For example, in this situation, or rook takes a2 and then e4, yeah. Yeah, so maybe that that was that maybe that was the reason, perhaps. Uh, I did have another idea on that, but I forget what it was. Yeah, so Queen B6 is the uh, alternative. I think Queen B6 could actually be played, or rather, it was looked at being played in this position. I'm just going to chuck that in. I think. I don't think this forcibly wins material, though. I think there's a way. I think Black is okay here. Yeah, it doesn't it looks like I didn't look at this variation, but uh, e4. So just an example of how that could uh, how that could play out. So yeah, bishop e4, and then we see the trade of the rooks. So uh, white's basically got all the play, all the black pieces are passive defending. Um, yeah, computer likes queen to b8 check here. So queen to b6 was played. 
then we got this in between move check and then we get the check here so yeah in this position uh, yeah king h1 is best uh, there are perpetual ideas developing for black potentially um, but yeah king h1 just looks like it's winning uh, king h1 looks like it's winning but yeah king f1 rook b8 which is recommended which is what was played um, and it seems that the strongest move for white is just to trade queens. So, like this. So obviously rook takes. And something like this, king f2, king e7. So the king, obviously defending the bishop, allows the rook to move. King f3, bishop b, uh, rook b7. And obviously the rook, uh, the the white king's going to break through on the king side. Steen and uh, yeah, b5 ends up being taken anyway. So that was what was uh, recommended. So it seems that um, there's a lot of good moves for white and not many for black, but the computer played this move, rook to a6, which gives a very interesting final position, because obviously, like, well, what does black do now? I mean, obviously, if the rook, if you take the rook, then queen takes. It takes the queen, trading queens allows this pawn to come through, and then it gives check. It allows check, because obviously this bishop can then play to d5, where it defends the pawn giving check so that doesn't seem very pleasant um, well it seems like there's only one good move for uh, for black because at the moment this bishop's dropping obviously if the queen moves away then you know we've got this battery on the bishop so um, black needs to use uh, the perpetual check ideas to really do anything. I think anything else is just really bad. So yeah, queen queen e three, obviously hitting the bishop on e four, um, and this really is the start of the position and what I wanted to look at. So queen takes d six really is forced somewhat for white, although it's clearly a good move taking a piece. This you know this this pawn can now move. Um, and you know, black's pieces are not coordinated. White's pieces, it's everything's white basically. And obviously, the rook's hanging. Um, so, rook e8 is forced. Um, and yeah, this, uh, this is the key move here. Obviously, white does have uh, perpetual check ideas. Just going to put more moves here on the engine. Yeah, so I think um, the moves that have been looked at in other videos have been, for example, h4 and I think bishop to f3. Yeah, bishop to f3 and h4. The idea of hiding the king on h3. These moves have been explored. Um, but yeah, it seems that the way that white can avoid these perpetuals well actually white can av uh, avoid it by playing something like queen to c6 this is also a draw but I think what happens here I should probably explain what's actually happening as well so in this position we play queen to c6 and now the best move for white is just to take the, the bishop we're still gonna have these perpetual ideas for, for, for black, sorry, to play perpetual ideas. But notice with the queen on c6, it it's uh, at the moment covering d5. 
but when this pawn moves forward, the queen's going to be able to come back to defend the king, and this is the, the idea of this. So it recommends now d6. Um, and uh, it seems black really doesn't want to trade queens here, so if black now tries to find a perpetual in this position, uh, so king f2, so something like this, so you've got check, 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 and then g3, uh, which really only gives this check, I mean there is a check on d2 as well actually, but now again we've got queen to g2 and um, well black has got play here after after queen f5 take queen takes f5 for example so for white it's like well obviously, if, if, obviously white has to play queen to g2 to, otherwise it's just a draw so that doesn't seem so great for white but there is this in between move so here after rook e8 rather than immediately playing queen to c6 we can first put in a check on d7 which forces black to play rook e7 and anything else, like if if king to f8 or king g8, for example, these are well king g8 obviously just loses on the spot, obviously because queen takes rook, uh, and that's just going to be mate. But uh, even with king f8, that's a mate in 17, so rook e7 is forced. And the the key idea here is that by forcing black to block with the rook, means that when white plays d6, it's hit, it's uh, hitting the rook. So now when when white plays queen to c6 and black takes the bishop now d6 comes we've got two you know attacking the queen and the rook so here in this position if if uh if black tries to uh just give these checks go for perpetual then we get to the same position after g3 but now when uh, white blocks stops the perpetual with the queen then the rook's still hanging so obviously if if black takes the queen this is just going to be bad because obviously at the end of it then the rook's going to be taken and if something like just well queen takes again the rook so it's just just lost basically so it seems like this is the way to avoid the perpetuals for white and to maintain the advantage uh, and then just really one final variation to follow this up was so in this position after check king g1 so it recommends just basically moving the rook back just obviously get out of this uh, so obviously just get out of the attack basically but it seems that um, this is a lot better for white there's no perpetual no force perpetual uh, and white maintains the advantages um, it seems that, uh, that white still has to be careful uh, for example by playing something like rook to a1 similar to some other ideas so defending the king it seems uh, I haven't explored this variation too much but uh, it seems the rook still needs to help defend it's just a rather case of using the pieces correctly but I mean well how does black maintain these perpetuals and defend for example b5 I don't think it's possible so I mean one example of continuation was like this uh, so you see I mean b5 just drops so this seems intuitively that white's still winning uh, so 
yeah, it seems that essentially in conclusion, um, at least this was what I was able to to find my limited ability and experience and time. But uh, it seems that there isn't any way to force any kind of perpetual that's good for black. Um, yeah, so hopefully you found that interesting. If you have any uh, comments or any suggestions, then feel free to let me know.